Welcome to Newsday, reporting live from Singapore. I'm Karishma Viswani. The headlines. The final countdown to Tokyo's delayed Olympics. Anticipation rises, but so do the COVID cases and controversies. The opening ceremony is just hours away. I'm Sarah Mulkerns, live in Tokyo as the city is finally waking up to the beginning of the Olympic Games with organizers hoping the sporting action will boost the mood of the nation. China deals with the devastating aftermath of catastrophic flooding. Thousands are evacuated from the Henan region. At least 33 people are confirmed dead. Also on the program, renewed friction between the United States and China. Beijing rejects a plan by the WHO for a second visit to the country to investigate the origins of COVID-19. This, the response from Washington. We're deeply disappointed. Uh, their position is irresponsible and frankly dangerous. Live from our studio in Singapore. This is BBC News. It's Newsday. Welcome to viewers around the world and in the UK. It's 7 in the morning in Singapore and 8 a.m. in Tokyo, where the much-troubled 2020 Olympics will finally open in a few hours' time. After a year's delay due to COVID-19, the wait is almost over for more than 11,300 athletes trying to get their hands on an Olympic medal. There's already been a total of 91 coronavirus cases in Tokyo directly linked to the Games. That's after a sixth member of the Czech Olympic team tested positive in the last few hours. Beyond the athletes' village, daily COVID infections in Tokyo are now higher than at any time since January. And with no fans allowed into stadiums, there's less income for the organizers to try to recoup the cost of 12.6 billion dollars. Celebrations at the opening ceremony will be the most subdued of any Olympics in history. Nevertheless, our Tokyo correspondent Rupert Wingfield Hayes has managed to track down some excited fans. <laughs> 